Hey everybody, this is Franco, and this video is all about spindle control. So if you have a centroid acorn and you've looked at the wiring diagrams or the schematics for your centroid acorn, you will see that there are a, a lot of really good wiring diagrams that tell you how to use the 0 to 10 volt analog output along with some relays to control a VFD. And if you have a VFD or a variable frequency drive, it's actually really easy to interface that with the centroid acorn. Uh, it's a slam dunk. And once again, there's lots of really good documentation uh, that comes from centroid that shows you how to do that. But a lot of people uh, want to wire up the acorn to different types of machines that uh, don't use a VFD. They may use a, uh, an, a DC motor controller. And a lot of the smaller machines like the, you know, the mini mills, the mini lathes, the uh, precision, precision Matthew milling machines, they use these DC uh, motor controllers. So this can present a little bit of a challenge because there's, uh, you know, the Acorn wants to run at, uh, you know, 0 to 10 volts, where your DC motor controller might run at a different voltage, like 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 12 volts. Uh, there can also be some issues with ground loops. And I have a, a few older videos about uh, hooking up an Acorn to a, uh, a Chinese mini lathe uh, control box. And I struggled with ground loops when I was doing that, and I really... I never really had a good solution to the problem until a very nice gentleman uh, who, uh, I, I, his first name is Roland, and that's all I'm going to say because I, I want to respect his privacy, but a very nice gentleman named Roland uh, reached out to me over my YouTube channel, and he actually sent me a schematic that he made up here. He took the time to do this, which was really cool of him, and he sent me a nice email explaining how to use what we have right here. This is a KDSI-240D, um, I guess we would call this a voltage isolation board. I don't know. Let me get you the official name for this thing. It is a, what, is, what does the company call it? Signal isolator, that's what they call it. It's from a company called uh, KB, and this is a KBSI-240D signal isolator. And basically what this does is it allows you to uh, safely take this 0 to 10 volt output from the Acorn, isolate it, so you're, you're isolating all the electronics on the Acorn from, you know, all the electronics that are in your milling machine. So you don't have to worry about ground loops and all those, you know, weird things that can happen that could potentially, you know, damage your uh, Acorn board. And then it, it allows you to convert that 0 to 10 volt uh, from the Acorn into uh, whatever voltage you need it to be to control your, uh, your milling machine. So I'll give you a little demonstration here. So right now my spindle is turned off. Uh, I'm going to turn my spindle on. So I have my Acorn and my CNC12 software configured for a maximum spindle RPM of 3000 RPM. So I'm going to press cycle start and you'll notice the uh, relays kicked on. I'm using the, uh, the, re the new relay board here along with this. The relay's kicked on, and I actually may have given you the wrong spindle. Oh yeah, here. Okay. Take two. Now, we're going to be at maximum spindle speed. There we go. So, so my uh, software is configured for a maximum spindle speed of 3000 RPM, and I adjusted the pots on the uh, signal isolator to give me a voltage of 5 volts at my maximum RPM. Now if I stop the spindle, 
give it an M5. Okay, the spindle stopped. Now I'm back to a zero voltage. Uh, if I command uh, 1500 RPM, I'll be right in the middle. So here we go, 1500 RPM. Now I have a voltage of 2.5 volts. And, uh, you know, as a further example, if I command 300 RPM, now the voltage drops down to 0.5 volts uh, because, you know, 300 RPM is, is one tenth of the uh, maximum voltage. So anyway, you can see how this works and uh, it's pretty cool. So let me stop the spindle. Go back to a zero voltage. All right, so I will uh, post this schematic that uh, this gentleman was nice enough to make for me. I haven't actually wired this thing up yet, so um, I, you know I'm, I'm I'll just you know full disclosure I haven't hooked this up to my machine, but I uh, have a high degree of confidence that uh, you know what's on this paper is going to be very helpful uh, to a great many people. So how does this work? Um, very simple. You know, you, you, you follow the manual for the KBSI 240D. Uh, you're inputting 110 volts and that, you know, this will work at 110 or 240 volts. So at 110 volts, you have to jump or some things together. No big deal. Over here, um, these two connections, this is where you actually feed the voltage from the acorn. So I got a, a blue wire and a red wire. You can see that's coming out of the analog output of the acorn. Then over here, uh, these two terminals, this is where you send your voltage. So this is basically what's replacing the potentiometer on your uh, milling machine. And then you, uh, you just use some relays to uh, basically you know, control the spindle forward, reverse motion, turn the spindle off and on, um, however you want to configure it. You also can, you know, wire up a relay in the uh, e-stop circuit of your milling machine. Uh, so you can actually set it so if you uh, trigger an e-stop on the acorn, you can trigger an e-stop on your milling machine, stop the spindle. So once again, safety items, that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to make any claims about safety, right? You need to be responsible for your own safety, and I would highly encourage you to uh, take all the necessary precautions. But point is, you have plenty of relays now. You have all this cool uh, output control on the acorn. And if you have one of these signal isolators, now you can control the voltages you know, rather easily. So let me give you a little demonstration here. I'm going to fire off a maximum RPM. So that's my maximum RPM, 3000 RPM. And you know, for this example, I want my maximum RPM voltage to be 5 volts. If I wanted to change that, I would just come over here. Uh, this is the pot that adjusts the maximum voltage. So I'm just going to try to turn this carefully with my left hand. All I'm going to do is turn that pot, and I can change, you know, whatever I want the maximum voltage to be. It has quite a quite a wide range. Um, you can, you know, really manipulate the maximum voltage to be whatever you want it to be. I want it to be five volts, so I'm going to take it back down to five volts. I'm just turning this pot. There we go, five volts. Now you want to do the same thing with the minimum voltage. So I will stop the spindle. I'm going to give it M5. All right, spindle stopped, zero. Uh, same thing, there's a pot right here. This is hard to do with my left hand, but there we go. So I'm going to turn that pot and I can use that pot to actually adjust the minimum voltage, which I think in most cases you're going to want that to be zero. 
but if for some reason you want it to be something other than zero, you can you can get that. There we go. Perfect. And it it's like literally that simple. Um, I guess maybe one other thing I'll point out, there's a switch here. Uh, you can make this board work between uh, voltage or current. I think you want to have it always switched to voltage to do what we're doing here. Um, but it's pretty basic. You can buy these boards on eBay. I think I bought mine. Mine is a used one. I probably paid like $20 for it. I see used ones on there all the time. Uh, I think a brand new one might be, I don't know, it might cost around $200. I'm not sure. I never bought a brand new one. But there's so many used ones on there that you should be able to find one on eBay. And uh, yeah, it really simplifies life, makes life much easier. So, all right, so there you go. So lots of neat stuff. We have the relay expansion board for the Acorn. Uh, if you want to do some spindle control, here's one really good option to replace that potentiometer and uh, get that going. And of course, as far as spindle feedback, uh, as I've shown in my other videos, it is like really easy to uh, connect an encoder up to your Acorn board. So for not a whole lot of money, you can have a total spindle control with a really high resolution spindle feedback from an encoder and have that all, you know, wired up to your Acorn board and running through the CNC12 software. All right, well, I uh, hope that was helpful. Please be safe and thanks for watching.